Welcome back to how to build an F-14 Tomcat. Got a little bit more work done today. Not a whole lot. Spent most of the entire morning and afternoon shoveling snow trying to get out of our driveway. From the two feet we got this past weekend. But I did get a chance to get our NACA ducks on the airframe done. We've got two on uh, engine nacelles, one per nacelle. Then we've got two up by the, by the gun blister. Pretty uh, difficult to make these things. Took a couple of tries. We actually took about eight tries to make one before we got a couple good ones. What we actually ended up doing, we ended up making a plywood plug. As you see here, it's just a piece of plywood cut out, shaped the size of the NACA duct we want, and then we just cut another hole and glued it in there and kept the put a taper to it. And then what I did is I made a, a balsa wood box around the whole thing and I filled it with this rubber casting compound which I got from a company called Smooth On. S M Double O T H dash O N. Smooth On. What it is it's actually a 90 durometer urethane rubber that's actually it's a two part rubber that's mixed two to one. So it comes in a liquid which is what these big old cans are for. So you got the actual resin type stuff here. See it's PMC seven ninety urethane rubber from those guys, smooth on. Excellent people. Really nice. A little expensive. I actually use this stuff to make a set of tires for a big F-18 that ended up not working out too well. Because this stuff is actually about twice as hard as your average car tire. So it's some really hard stuff. It's kind of like a brick. You can... It's got some pretty good uh, density to it. But what I did is I just took our litho plating. You can actually see on this one the different colors. I took our litho and I took some regular Dawn dish detergent, detergent like you'd find in your kitchen or bathroom or whatever. Put a little bit of that on my finger, rubbed it onto the litho plate, took a torch, heated it from the back side of it. Then actually it turns this nice little bronze color and it actually it heats up the aluminum and the, the soap is actually there to kind of help cool the process so you don't burn a hole into it and actually as you heat it up the smoke or the the soap kind of burns off of it into a <laughs> into a vapor which really stinks and then it kind of turns a nice little brown color put some water onto it wipe it off with a paper towel or washcloth or whatever and then you can actually put the litho here on top of the rubber mold put your plywood on top of it just smack it with a hammer and rinse and repeat for the second one. This little one's a little bit harder to do. I actually had to, actually for all the NACA ducks, I had to anneal it twice. So actually I annealed it the first time, put the rubber on there, stuck it down, hammered it about two times, pulled it out, re annealed it, and did it again. It took about eight tries for the little ones. The first ones were pretty simple. I got those on the first try. What happens is you can actually see these little wrinkles here. This, the woman kind of wrinkles on onto itself. So I can form down into the really tight crevices and get a real nice crisp line. And actually what I use to to get rid of those wrinkles is that boy right there. It's just a wallpaper seam roller from those two bucks. Works a treat. Whenever you get ready to apply your aluminum panel, put your contact adhesive on both sides, get on there, and then just roll it up and down. Works really well for getting it to, to go around the curves. Just some little things I've learned to try and pass on to some people who have never tried this process. Works really well in this instance for large scale. This stuff's heavy. The box I have right down here full of this stuff. This box actually weighs about 100 pounds. And it's pretty deep box as you can see. And it was stacked full. It had about that much in there when I got it originally. And you can see I haven't even started to go through this stuff at all. I probably got another thousand sheets of this stuff in there. And it's just paper thin, so there's tons of it. Down here we got a couple more things. We've got our vertical stabilizers. We've had these done for a couple of days. Again, you can see a lot of the fine detail on these fairings that actually are removable on the full scale. Just trying to get all this stuff detailed in. Then up here, we've got more doublers. The tips are a little different to do. Actually, I had to anneal those just as well. And since I can't do it all in one piece, actually, I did it in two halves. You may be able to see the seam there. My camera kind of sucks. 
but yeah, there's a the seam. You can see it kind of works out. A little bit more finishing work to do on the final product, but at least we get all the detail in there. I don't think that little bit of seam, that should be the seam where the actual mold parting line is anyway. So that should be pretty well covered up once you get some parts going. But that's pretty much where we are today. Hopefully we'll get some more work done tomorrow. Get some more of these larger panels done. Hopefully we won't have to make too many more molds to make these detail panels. This panel right here would be pretty difficult to do. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that stuff again. Bob, here's your finger. I'm giving you some more finger today. To actually, I will turn the fuselage on its side. So this is pointing vertical and I'll make parting planes all around this. I'll mix up a batch of that stuff. Pour it on there and I'll let it sit overnight. Then once that is cured, I'll remove the big rubber block off of it. Do the exact same thing on the other side using hopefully the same parting planes. And then once both of those are done, I'll actually flip those upside down, build more parting planes around it, and make another piece. So you actually you'll have two identical rubber blocks that fit exactly this curvature. And then I'll anneal a piece of the litho plating, stick it between there, and I'll just hammer the crap out of it until it forms this nice compound curve we have here. Because you see there's actually, not only does it curve this way, you've got curves this way and then it curves a little bit this way. So you've got three different curves here to work with. Should be pretty interesting things to see how it works out. But that's where we're at today. And we will see y'all next time in the shop.